Hi, and welcome back to another Exosites install video. I am John Wilson, and I'll be going over how to install our R3D 2.0 sites for 1911s. Uh, one thing to note about 1911s is there are a bunch of different makes and models. Uh, they date back all the way to 1911. They're back-to-back uh, -back World War champions. Uh, one issue with that is that manufacturers have changed things over the years, so depending on your make and model, uh, you may or may not run into an issue that I cover here. Uh, one thing to note, I have two Kimbers here. This Kimber I have in my right hand is old enough that it does not have safety spring underneath the rear sight. This Kimber, and I'm not gonna take it off because I don't want the spring to shoot across the room, has its safety spring underneath the rear sight. The rear sight is actually holding the safety spring in. You need to be aware when you take your gun apart and you go to remove your sights if you have or do not have the safety spring underneath the rear sight. We'll be doing a Novak install on this Remington 1911. Got green with the R32.0 rear. Uh, some tools you'll need, assorted punches, cleaning material. I've got a small hammer that I'm going to start with, trying to show you that it's not a difficult install. And then if push comes to shove, I've got a little bit bigger one. And we shouldn't need any of that stuff. You'll also need a 1 Allen key. There should be one provided in your kit, assuming that you haven't misplaced it. If you look at this fit right here, this is about the fit that you want before you start driving your sight in. If it doesn't go in this far, you need to reevaluate, try it from the other side. If I try it from this side, I can't even get it started. So there is an install direction for some of these 1911s, but you should be able to get your sight installed about that far. I'm going to start with my softest punch and my smallest hammer. And all I'm doing is trying to just get nice, even taps to get the sight started in the gun. Trying not to get it twisted. Just lightly drive it in until it gets too snug for my setup. And if you watch the sight, instead of what you're swinging your hammer at, go hit your fingers. I've driven it in, a few more good hits, about as tight as it'll go. I'm going to go with the bigger hammer, not because I need more force, but because I need a larger surface area to stop me from hitting my fingers. A little bit more surface area, I'm more confident in what I'm doing, allows me to swing a little harder, not worry about hitting my hand. You see this sight just kind of walks itself right in the dovetail. And I'm using a nylon punch, about the softest one we recommend. Now I can feel my punch deforming on the edge, which means I am going to have to step this one up to the brass just to get it centered in the dovetail. You want to use brass because brass is softer than the slide material and if you accidentally hit your slide, it won't cause any permanent damage. And it's going to be hard to grip this punch in particular because it's shorter. I'll show you guys on camera. But you see with just barely any swings, I'm able to walk the sight in. Now I'm going to take this out just to show everyone that I did touch my slide a little bit, but the reason we use brass is because a little bit of cold blue will take that right off. There's no damage done to the slide. I'm going to reverse. Give you guys a nice camera angle. 
Got the rear sight. You want to check your rear sight because there may be a side that goes in farther than. That's already at halfway, so that's where I would start. The other side doesn't quite go in as far, so I am going to start from this is the left side of the gun, but my right side. And got my nylon. And I am using a little bit bigger hammer just so I have a bigger surface area to hit. And that is just, I mean, you know, I'm choked up as choked up as you can get on this hammer. And it just walks itself right into the gun. Now, that looked easy, and I don't know what everyone's going to have happen to them at home. They're going to get theirs. They're going to have a six pound hammer out. They're going to be two handed swinging while their, hand, their, while their friend holds the punch. And then everyone's going to hate me on the internet, but I'm telling you, it will go in. You should remember, as I stated earlier, these are old guns. Um, they date back a long time. Manufacturers have changed stuff. We do have tech support uh, and customer service for those who need a little bit of extra uh, confidence. And then we also have, for those who are not confident, um, installation services where you ship us just the slide and then we install the sights for you and ship it back to you. We do not receive guns so you will need to know how to take your gun apart. So now you have your sights installed and uh, now is a good time you're gonna lock your sights in with your set screw. The front should not move as long as you don't abuse it. The rear will hold itself in place with the set screw. You can go and check your zero and check your windage. If you need to do any adjustments, it's as simple as take that loose. On some of them, it'll be so loose you can move it by hand. Others, you will need a little tapping device if you need to go left or right. Um, even with just a soft mat, you can rest it on the table. Soft mat, tiny hammer, a few little taps. You'll see that I have now offset it in the dovetail. Uh, if your gun shoots left or right, this is how we recommend doing adjustments. If you need more adjustment than this, you can also drift the front sight. Please note that front sights drift opposite of the way you need to aim. And we have a bunch of other resources and also tech support on explaining that. But you want to lock your sight in place. Do not over tighten the screw. You want to take your red lock tight because with most of these guns, uh, you will need to lock tight, and we recommend it for every gun. If you use lock tight, your sights will not come out. Now, the best way to do this, the more the merrier. So you just glob that up. Try not to get any down in that screw hole. I've already um, gotten close. If you have a safety uh, springer plunger under the rear sight, you want to avoid putting Loctite on that side of the gun. Uh, for example, the safety spring is on the right hand side of the gun underneath here, so I'd only Loctite this back surface and the left side of the dovetail. But get it, glob it on there. Uh, Loctite has good capillary action, so it will work its way down into all the nooks and crannies. You want to let the Loctite sit for 15 minutes. You want to let it sit globbed on there, just like this, for 15 minutes. And we'll be back in 15 minutes. So you've been to the range, you shot the gun without Loctite on there, you confirmed your uh, sights in zero. Uh, you've put the Loctite on, you've waited 15 minutes. After your 15 minute period, this is where you cosmetically clean the gun. You can see how much Loctite we had on the gun before. I used just a little bit of standard gun cleaner, uh, scrubbed it, you can see the uh, back side of the sight is still oily and then the parts where I had the Loctite is actually where I wiped it with the gun cleaner and there is almost no excess Loctite left on this gun. Now you want to let this cure for 24 hours before you really abuse it but after 24 hours it will be fully cured and you are good to um, put it back in the safe and never shoot it. One thing you want to make sure you do after you clean your gun Give it a re-oil. Well, these are black nitride sights, but it's always a good idea to keep your guns oiled. It's 
especially if they're going to go back in the safe. A little oil on the rag, just give everything a quick wipe down once over. Thanks for watching the video guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share the video with your friends. Also be sure to be following us on Instagram and Facebook to be uh, up to speed in all the new things that we're doing. If you guys want early access into some of those cool things that we're doing, make sure that you're signed up for our email newsletter. You guys get uh, exclusive discounts, early promos, and like I said, insights to all the new things that we're doing. As an American made family owned company, our mission is to empower the good guy to be more confident, self-reliant, and prepared through functional weapon upgrades. So again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.